Hi there, it's Kristen from Quebeca, and today we're going to be making our own hand-painted wrapping paper. This is a great project for the holiday season or really any time of the year. To make your own gift wrap, you only need a few basic supplies. The paper that you'll use depends on what size gifts you'll be wrapping. I really like this 18 by 24 inch pad of sketch paper from Canson because the paper is large enough to wrap shirt boxes and medium sized gifts. There are 100 sheets per pad and I like that it's 50 pound weight which is light and flexible enough that you can easily crease and fold it without the extra bulkiness that can happen when you try to wrap gifts with heavier paper. I'll tear a sheet of paper out of the pad and then I'll grab my paint. I'm using acrylic paints from Americana for all of the different designs that I'll be making, but you can use any brand of acrylic paint that you'd like. I'll list all of the paint colors that I'm using in the supply area below the video. I'll be using a sheet of palette paper to hold my paint. I like to use palette paper for projects that call for several different paint colors because it gives me a lot of room to work. When I'm finished with the project and the paint dries completely, I can often peel the acrylic paint off of the sheet of palette paper and reuse it. If you don't have palette paper, a sheet of printer paper, or even a paper plate will work well too. The first wrapping paper that I'll be making is going to have a polka dot pattern. And to make the dots, I'll be using the sponge pouncers from Tulip. I'll use a different pouncer for each color. And now I'm going to squeeze some of the first paint color that I'll be using onto the palette paper. Next, I'll load my pouncer with paint and pounce off any excess onto the palette paper. After that, I'll press the pouncer onto the paper to make a dot. If you want heavier coverage, then you can press the pouncer over the same area more than once to add more paint. The less paint you use, the spongier the dots look around the edges, and I really like that sponged on look. I'm going to continue randomly adding dots in the first color all across the piece of paper, reloading my pouncer after every two to three dots and adding more paint to the palette paper as needed. I'm spacing my dots pretty widely, but you can space them as close or as far apart as you'd like. Once I'm done making dots with the first color, I'm going to follow the same process with the second color. I didn't allow the first color of paint to dry before moving on to the second color, but if I'm careful about it, I can partially overlap dots to create a more interesting look. Just be sure not to rub the pouncer around as you're pressing it over the dot in the first color. If you press down firmly, then lift the pouncer straight up, you shouldn't have an issue with the first paint color transferring onto your pouncer. I'll continue making dots in all of the different colors that I'm using, and when I'm finished, I'm going to go back in for a second pass with each color and add more dots in areas where I want them. After the second pass, I'm happy with how my wrapping paper looks, but you can go over it as many times as you need to get the look that you're going for. Now I'm going to set this sheet of wrapping paper aside and move on to the next design. For the remaining designs, I'll be using these flat brushes from Royal Langnickel. The set includes 1, 2, and 3 inch brushes. For this design, I'll be using the 2 inch brush and a single paint color. This is by far the quickest to make of the three designs that I'll be showing in this video. So I've already made some test marks on the palette paper, and what I'm going to do is load the brush with paint, then brush onto the palette paper until the bristles of the brush are in a thin straight line, like this. Then I'm going to brush onto the paper sideways, making long, thin brush strokes. Push down a little bit harder to make thicker brush strokes, and use less paint if you want to make lighter brush strokes with lots of texture. We're going for a very loose and organic look here, so you really can't mess it up, and it all goes very quickly. I'm using a single color for my design, but you can use as many colors as you'd like. Just make sure to let each color dry before adding brush strokes in another color, or you may smear the two colors together. Okay, once I'm done making the brush strokes, I'll set this wrapping paper aside to dry completely and I'll move on to the last design. For this design, I'll be using the one inch brush from the brush set. And I want to orient my paper vertically this time around because I'm going to be making stripes. I'll add some of the first color of paint to the palette paper and then I'll load the brush and start painting. I'm working right to left and I'm actually not painting right to the edges of the paper because I don't want to get paint on my work surface. The edges will be hidden when the gift is wrapped anyway, so no one will see that little bit of white space on each side of the stripe. You may need to reload your brush with paint several times to complete the stripe, and it's totally okay if your line isn't exactly straight or a consistent width. This is supposed to look hand painted, so little wobbles and inconsistencies are exactly what we want. When I'm finished with the first stripe, 
I'll rinse my brush and dry it with a paper towel before moving on to the next color. I'll repeat this process for each stripe until I reach the bottom of the paper. This design took the most time of the three. It was about 20 minutes from start to finish, but you can cut down that time a lot if you just use one color because you won't have to rinse the brush between colors. Once I'm finished painting the stripes, I'll set this wrapping paper aside to dry with the others. And after they're completely dry, I'll pair them with ribbon and other embellishments to create packages that are sure to stand out under the tree. You can find a full list of supplies used in this project in the description area below or in the area below the video if you're watching on kbecca.com. I hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to see more seasonal and holiday craft projects, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I hope you'll tune in again soon.